Hi, this is question number nine from the AQA Mechanics 2 January 2013 exam paper. A smooth hollow hemisphere of radius A and centre O is fixed so that its rim is in a horizontal plane. A smooth uniform rod AB of mass M is in equilibrium with one end A resting on the inside of the hemisphere and the point C on the rod being in contact with the rim, um, sorry, with the rim of the hemisphere. The rod of length L is inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal. For part A, we need to explain why the reaction between the rod and the hemisphere at point A acts through um, O. So, um, what we're trying to say is that the reaction force between this um, rod and this hemisphere um, acts through O. Well, in order for us to um, decide that, um, we need to take, to take into account that this is a smooth hemisphere and that also the rod is smooth. So that means that um, the point of contact here, the reaction force, is going to be um, perpendicular to the tangent of the hemisphere and if it's perpendicular to the tangent then um, it must be a it must go through um, the center because the radius is perpendicular to the tangent so um, we can explain why the reaction force and the rod um, at point A acts through O um, we can say well simply um, because it is smooth so we can say here that because it is smooth. Okay, part B says draw a diagram to show the forces acting on the rod. So I'm actually going to draw my diagram um, on top of this one. Um, so we can start by putting in our reaction forces. Uh, let's use green lines. Okay, so I'm going to have a reaction force that's going to be going through uh, so that's going to be one of my reaction forces and I'm also going to have another reaction force where the rod um, sits on the rim over here and that's going to be perpendicular to the rod so we'll have another reaction force that's going to be going in that direction there okay um, and I'm also going to have um, the weight that's going to be acting downwards and that's going to be in the center of this rod here and that's going to be going vertically downwards so I'll label these up we're going to have um, our reaction force here which I'm going to call um, I'm going to call it P and Q so we'll call that one P and we'll call this one Q and I'm going to call this here well this is going to be my weight um, my mass is M um, so I'm going to call this mg. Okay, um, so those are all my forces. That's that's enough information um, there. I'm just going to go a little bit further though because I'm going to um, label, in, label in some angles that I know. Um, and this here is theta. And because this here is a radius and this here is a radius, that means we have an isosceles triangle here. So this angle here is also going to be theta. Okay, and I'm also going to um, just jot in the component of this. So I'm going to jot in the angle here, um, which is going to... Well, this is a right angle triangle, so this angle here is also going to be theta. Okay, right. Um, so I'm now going to... I've done my forces. We've done part B. So part C, um, and I'm going to do part C over here, I think. We'll start it over here. Okay, part C um, says we want to show um, that L is equal to this thing here. Now, um, I'm going to start off by um, resolving this um, parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane. So, um, resolving it parallel to the plane, so resolving it in that direction there. Um, we are going to have, well, I will have uh, 
this here, so that's going to be um, P cos theta. And um, that's going to be equal to, and we're going to have mg um, sine theta. And this here is going to be, well, this here is perpendicular um, to the plane, so um, that's not going to um, be involved. Okay, so um, so that's resolving it parallel to the plane. We're now going to resolve it perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so perpendicular to the plane, we are going to have um, Q plus, and we're going to have P sine theta. And that's going to be equal to, and that's going to be mg cos theta. Okay. Now, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take moments about um, a here. So, moments about a. Okay, so um, take a moment about A. Um, my uh, perpendicular distance from um, A to MG, well this distance here is going to be, our length is L, so this is going to be half of the length. So we're going to have half of L, and I'm going to use a capital L, um, because otherwise my L's won't be very obvious. So half L um and um the um force here is going to be mg cos theta okay and um we're also going to have um so that's going to be equal to q and we need to multiply that by this distance here. Okay, so um, this distance here, well, because we know that the radius here is A, if I um, drop a line down here, then this distance here is going to be A cos theta. And I've got the same distance over here so this distance here is also going to be a cos theta. So in fact, the distance from a to c is going to be 2a cos theta. So I can times this by 2a cos theta. OK, so um, I'm just going to tidy this, this up a little bit. So I'm going to double through. Um, and that's going to tell me, and, and I can lose the cos thetas um, because it's common on both sides. So that's going to be LMG is equal to 2QA. Sorry, 4QA. Okay, so. Um, now what I need is I need to, um, because I want it in this form here, um, I don't want to have a Q term in it. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to rearrange this to get this in terms of Q. Um, but I also don't want a P term, so I need to rearrange this to get it in terms of P. So um, this here. we're going to have P is equal to um, mg sine theta over cos theta. So that's going to be mg tan theta.
Okay, and um, I can now sub that into here, and I can say that um, Q is going to be equal to, um, and it's going to be uh, mg cos theta take away, and it would be p sine theta, but I'm going to replace that with this here, so we're going to have mg tan theta sine theta. Okay, so um, so that's what Q is equal to, um, and I can now sub that into this expression here. Okay, so um, so subbing that into here, I'm going to have L. Red L M G is equal to, and it's going to be four A multiplied by Q, which is this here. So we're going to have M G cos theta take away mg tan theta sine theta okay um, so mg is going to be a common term but actually mg is going to cancel out now because we've got an mg there and an mg there and an mg there um, so we can lose those and um, we're going to have l we're going to have l is equal to 4a um, and in my brackets I'm going to have cos theta take away um, and we've got tan theta times sine theta but I'm going to write this as um, tan theta sine theta over cos theta so this is going to be sine squared theta over cos theta okay we're almost there now um, this is, um, I want to have a common denominator here, which I know is going to be cos theta. Um, so I will um, write this slightly differently. I will say L is equal to 4A, and we will have, if I multiply that by cos theta, I've got cos squared theta take away sine squared theta over, and it will be all over cos theta. Okay, because that would be cos squared theta over cos theta take away sine squared theta over cos theta. So we can just write it as a single fraction. Right, um, and using our trig identities, um, cos squared theta take away sine squared theta is the same as cos 2 theta. So L is going to be equal to 4A cos 2 theta over cos theta. And there you go. Right. Um, hopefully um, that was clear. That was um, quite a tough question. I did have a look at the examiner's report on this question, um, and and not many people managed to um, to answer this question. Um, so it was a bit of a tough one. Um, hopefully um, you were able to follow that, um, and you can see um, how you can solve a problem like this. Okay. Thanks very much for joining me. Take care. I'll see you again soon.